अपने अंदर ही खुद जाग कर हम खुद ही कटोले सबरदान दल दो सबरदान दे दो अमीमा सबरदान दे दो अमीमा सबरदान दे दो अमीमा कर गौरम करुणावतार संसार सार मैया जय गंगे माता जो नर तुम को जाता जो नर मैया जी को जाता मनवान चित पल पाता ओम जय गंगे बंधु शसखा 
states we speak of here's what's exciting let me preface it with this here's what's exciting what's exciting is for me when science discovers that which spirituality has been saying for thousands of years I find that very exciting I've got a scientific background. I love science. Science excites me. I find it fascinating. I still love it. I have absolutely no conflict between the science and the spirituality. They augment each other beautifully for me in my life, in my, my awareness, my thinking. The only dilemma comes when science tries to take jurisdiction over everything. When science tries to claim that 
its tools that it uses for science are actually the tools that should be used for all of knowledge and all of wisdom and all of truth. And that's where we get stuck. So the tools of science, we have machines that weigh, we have machines that measure, we have machines that look microscopically, we have machines that look telescopically, right? telescopes, microscopes. And that's fantastic for the world that can be weighed or measured, for the world that actually has an area or a volume or a mass or a velocity or a density. It's great for the world that is made up of molecules that you can see. But a lot of the world isn't. And this is the world over which spirituality has jurisdiction. And so for me, I find it very exciting when the two come together. And spiritually, we are told about different states of awareness. Neurologically now, we are told about different states of awareness. And interestingly, they actually match up very beautifully. The neurologists are going to talk to you about the frequency of the wave, literally. What does the, the pattern of the brain wave look like? What is that frequency? How high does it go? How low does it go? How much is the space between the next wave? Spiritually, they're going to talk energetically. But they're actually describing the same things. Now, the two states that you've spoken about, deep sleep and dream, I'm going to give it to you neurologically. I find it fun like that. So, neurologically, what we know is that in dream sleep, which is what we call REM sleep, rapid eye movement, sleep. That is when we dream. Deep sleep, we are not dreaming. But deep sleep is actually what's called restorative sleep, colloquially. When you're talking about the different phases of sleep, deep sleep is what's called restorative. Now, here's what's interesting. The wise people of all of the world's religious traditions have some variation of early to bed, early to rise, right? I don't know a religious tradition in the world that says, if you want to attain awareness, enlightenment, salvation, get up at 11 o'clock in the morning. It's the best time of day to wake up. It's all about wake up early in the morning, sleep early at night. Why? Well, we now know that actually the body has what we call a circadian rhythm, meaning in every 24 hours, there's a rhythm. And there's a rhythm of chemicals in the body. So there are times of day, for example, that we are more likely to experience pain than other times of day. If you had to have a painful surgery, there's actually a way to decide what time of day to have it when you come out, you're less likely to be in pain. And what we know about the circadian rhythm of sleep is that earlier in the night, you spend a greater percentage of your time asleep in deep sleep than in dream sleep, which is why the yogis and the mystics don't speak a lot about the dreams they have. Right? You, you don't hear them saying, God, you know, I had this dream last night. It's those of us who roll out of bed at 10 or 11 o'clock who say, oh my God, I had this dream. And here's why. Literally, the earlier you go to sleep, the more amount of time you spend in restorative sleep than dream sleep. 
as the night goes on, and especially into the early hours of the morning, regardless of what time you went to sleep. So it's not about how many hours after you go to sleep. It's actually about what time of night it is. You must have noticed it. Go to sleep at 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. Even you give yourself eight hours, you're not going to wake up fresh. You're going to wake up groggy because you've spent the vast majority of those hours dreaming rather than restoring. Go to sleep at 9, wake up at 3 or 4, You've only had six, maximum seven hours of sleep, but you are going to wake up so fresh because the body has restored itself. We also now actually know endocrinology. I've spoken with Chinese medical practitioners who talk about which time of day is dedicated to different organs of the body. The time in which, for example, the liver restores itself is 11 to 3. But in order for your liver to restore itself, you have to already be fast asleep. You've only got those four hours. Go to sleep at 1, you've cut it in half. Well, what we know is that the liver is that which clears toxins out of our body. The later you go to sleep, the less of a chance you have for those toxins to be cleared out of the body. So, but going back to just the states of the brain, so the more I'm dreaming, the less I'm restoring. So the goal is to get as much dream sleep, I mean, sorry, as much deep sleep as possible, which you get the earlier you go to sleep. I'll give you one last interesting piece of neurologic and psychological trivia about that. They've done studies with people who are depressed, who suffer from depression. They bring them into a sleep lab, and every time their brains enter dream sleep, they wake them up. Now that could get quite annoying. Keep getting awakened, keep getting awakened, keep getting awakened. And after several days in the sleep lab, these people may be tired because, of course, they keep getting awoken th throughout the night. But they have found that the depression dissipates. Now they're looking at why. What is it neurochemically? But what we know on a physical level, on a spiritual level, on a neurological level, on a psychological level, on an endocrinological level, if that's a word, is deep sleep, restorative sleep, is what you need. Dream sleep, fine, no problem. But try to schedule your sleeping hours in such a way that you're getting the vast majority of restorative sleep and less of the dream sleep for your bodies, for your emotions, and also spiritually, because then, of course, you're up early. It's a glorious time of day. In Indian tradition, we say Brahma Mort, right? The time of day dedicated to God. But if you don't go to sleep till one, getting up at four is really hard. You're not going to make it very many nights. So you have to go to sleep early enough. And if not four, five, 5.30, 6, but not 9, 10, 11. That's already well into the daytime. You're getting pretty much nothing but dream sleep. You're not benefiting your body on any level by staying asleep. You're better off setting an alarm. If you go to sleep late, you're better off setting an alarm. Get up early. Be tired during the day, assuming you're not operating heavy machinery or something. And be so tired that you go to sleep early the next night and start a pattern.